Well, praise the Lord. Thank you for watching today's program of Victory in the Valley. My name is Kevin Ortiz, and we're going to have a great time together. The Word of God is so amazing, and today we're going to be sharing a message called, Are You Ready for a Savior? Many people have been searching for God. They've been searching for, for, for a real Savior, and that's what Jesus is. He's alive. He's real. He died on the cross, but three days later, He rose back from the dead. So today, Jesus wants to come inside your heart. He wants to save your life and bring you into a life of life and godliness. Amen. Let's go and pray as we begin. Father, I thank you for bringing my friends to watch this program. Lord, I ask you to bless them that you open up their eyes so that they can hear you and know you as Lord and Savior over their life. We bless them right now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. I'm telling you, the Lord loves you so much, and he has a great plan and purpose for your life. As you hear this word, your faith is going to rise up. So get ready. Are you ready for a Savior? Jesus is coming for you. Amen. Are you all ready for the word of God? Open up your Bibles. I want you to go with me to 2 Corinthians. We're going to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9. I got a question for you. Are you happy? Yes. Are you thankful? Yes. Praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm happy and I'm thankful. I'm not bitter and I'm not angry. I'm not frustrated. I'm happy and I'm thankful. I mean, how can I be bitter, angry, and frustrated when all I've seen is the goodness of the Lord? Amen. Everywhere I go, I see the goodness of the Lord. Everywhere, I, everything I hear is of the goodness of the Lord. I'm happy and I'm thankful, amen? And that's what God wants us all to be like. We, he wants all of us to be happy and thankful, amen? It's very difficult for us to be down when we are riding with Jesus. It's very difficult for us to destroy others when we're so happy in the Lord. It's very difficult for the enemy to put bitterness and unforgiveness in our heart when all we have is this thankfulness for all the wonderful things the Lord has done for us. Amen. I'm happy and I'm thankful. And that's the way the Lord wants us all to be. He wants us to be happy and thankful. It doesn't mean that things around me are constantly, uh, that I never experience negative things. It doesn't mean that we don't go through some tough times. But God will never leave you nor forsake you. And you have a promise of victory no matter what you go through. So don't let the things that you see bring you down. Walk in faith. Continue to walk in love. Let God use you even when you feel like you're in the deepest part of the valley. Because the same God that is walking with you in the valley will lift you up to the highest mountaintop. Amen. So we are happy and we are thankful. Amen. Now in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6. It says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Everybody say, God loves a cheerful giver. Look at your neighbor, show them your pearly yellows, and tell them God loves a cheerful giver. Now, verse 8, it says, and God is able to bless you abundantly. How many want God to bless you abundantly? So that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed. It will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Praise the Lord for his word. Amen. So here the scriptures say that when I give, I'm sowing. I'm sowing a seed. Every time I go to the Lord with my tithes and my offerings and I give to God, I am sowing seed. Everybody say seed. seed. See, there's never a discouraged farmer when he has seed to sow. A farmer never looks at his seed and think, oh man, I'm losing my seed. 
I'm going to put it in the ground. This is terrible time. Sowing seed. I hate sowing seed. This is the worst. No, a farmer is excited because he knows that there's a time for everything. There's a time for sowing and there's a time for reaping. There's a time of sowing the seed, but then there's also a harvest time coming its way. Amen. And the harvest is determined by the amount of seed that you put in the ground. Now, God doesn't look at the number. God looks at the heart. Jesus looked over the offering one day, and there was rich people that were putting their money in, in abundance in the offering bucket, but there was one widow woman who only had the very little. The Bible says she only put two mites, but Jesus stopped the whole offering. He said, this woman has given more than all of you because she gave out of her need. She gave out of her necessity to God. She honored God with the very last that she had, but she had faith that God will provide. Amen. And so God looks at our heart when we give. God wants to know, are you a cheerful giver? The Bible says that he loves a cheerful giver. And I know God loves me. So I want to make sure that I always stay in that position of being cheerful before the Lord. In everything that I do. When I come and I give my tithes and my offering, I'm not bitter and broken and angry and frustrated. I'm not thinking about all the cares in the world and all the needs that, that I might have. Or I'm not thinking about the things that I want. I'm thinking, I want to worship my God. This is my tithes. This is my offering. I get to worship and thank God in a way that's unique and special only to me. I come with my gift. I come with my tithes. I come with my offerings. And I give it to the Lord. But the word of God says that as I give it, I am sowing seed. I am putting into the ground something that's going to be multiplied, that's going to be increased, that's going to grow, and it's going to bring in a great harvest to me. The, 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 there's a saying in the world, you could count how many, uh, you could count how many uh, seeds are, are in an apple, but you can't count how many apples are in a seed. And see, God wants us to live by his ways. God wants us to have faith being led by him, not by what we think, because the world will say, if you give to God, you're losing it, you missed it. There's some people that when you started coming to church and, and God started ministering to you about honoring him with your tithes and offerings, you know, you might have started giving it, and then your family, were, they started talking, they said, why are you giving that offering? Don't you know that, that, you know, Pastor Kevin, he has shoes he don't need anymore. But you see the way the luxury life that Pastor Kevin lives and, and the way they, 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 they no. They, they, they try to put some, something that you can see before you to cause you to not bless God. I want to tell you, we're faithful with your, with your tithes and offerings. We invested in the kingdom of God so people could preach and so people could hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. I buy my own shoes, amen. Ross has sales all the time, and I buy my shoes $39.99, and I like them, and I don't want anything else, amen. I buy my own clothes. I, buy, I don't need your money. God's my provider. You're not. Amen. Praise the Lord. But we are in the ministry of the Lord together. You're not here just, that, just for entertainment. You should go somewhere else because we ain't that entertaining. You're here because the word of God is preached here. You're here because your life is being changed by the Lord here. You're here because you're eating the word of God and you're being transformed into the image of Christ. You're here because the food here is good. The spiritual food of the Lord. But we can't just think about those that are in this room. Jesus didn't say, build a room and have everybody show up. He said, make disciples of all nations. That's why we're not just buying chairs and paying just for the electricity and the air condition, but we're preaching the gospel to the nations. We're sending finances to feed the hungry, feed the, the widows and the orphans. We're sending out the, our television and our media programs. We're constantly investing. Just this past year, only a few months, we've seen over 3,000 people hear the gospel and give their life to Jesus. Praise the Lord. And guess how that gets paid for? You, me. 
through our tithes and offerings. Jesus said, the, the, God said, so that there may be food in my house, says the Lord. Bring all the tithes. Bring all the offering in, into my house so that there may be food. And so we're following the Lord. But see, this is business. We're doing business with God. God says you sow a little, you will reap a little. You sow much, you're going to reap much. God's blessing will come upon you. You know, God's blessing will do more for you than your talents, your gifts, and your abilities. God's blessing will do more for you than any wisdom that you think you might have. When God blesses you, no man can stop you. When God brings in the increase from the north, south, east, and west, and then you begin to think, how did this happen? Nobody receives the glory or the credit but the Lord. Amen. 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 And so that's the way our heart needs to be, that when we give our tithes and offerings, we're not losing, we're investing. The Bible says, do not lay up treasures on earth where moth and rust does corrupt and thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust does not corrupt or thieves break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be as well. Is your treasure in so-and-so bank? Is your treasure in the second, third, fourth, fifth bank of Harlingen? Or is your treasure in the kingdom of God? You might say, well, you know, I put it there for safekeeping. <laughs> you know, just today, I mean, just this week, we found out that everybody's bought anything in the past three years on the internet, they've already got all your stuff. Did you know that? They, uh, they said all your information has been compromised. Anyone who's done anything on the internet for the past three years. Did you hear about that? You didn't hear about that? Oh, because they're still trying to look for a missing plane. Instead of, what, what, they're, 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 just, they're not telling you the truth. Because they don't want you to worry. They don't want you to be... To, to ask questions. But did you know that? That everybody's information for the past three years on the internet, whether you signed your name, you bought something online or whatever, they already know. It's been hacked. It's been stolen. You didn't know that. Oh, but I do all my banking through the internet. <laughs> Thieves are breaking in and stealing. They ain't doing it, you know, $10 here out of your account. They just take them. They, they go after the nations where all the monies are at. But it's going to affect you. It's going to affect all of us. I can have nothing in my pocket, but I'll still be blessed because God will take care of me. You can have nothing in your bank account, but you'll still be able to eat good and live good and do whatever God calls you to do because God will provide for you. Amen. It doesn't, I'm not telling you this to be worried or anything. I'm not telling you something that's not already out there. It's all out there. But they ain't talking about it, but it's happened. And you think, oh, but we got extra protection. No, you don't. If you put your faith in your bank account, your heart is going to be broken. If you put your faith in God, you might have all the money in your bank account, but you put your faith in God, doesn't matter if it all goes tomorrow, God's still your God. He doesn't change. He still will answer your prayers. He still loves you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. I'm not saying don't, I'm not saying don't, don't use banks and don't do business. No, do all that good stuff. But whether you have or do not have, don't let that, don't let that rob you of your joy. You are here to serve the Lord. Amen. And whatever is missing, the Lord brings it. The Lord, the, Lord, the Lord provides. Amen. He's good and he's faithful that way. God bless you, my friends. Listen, the Lord has been speaking to me about the month of November to go on a mission trip to Africa. As you know, you see in the news, there are a lot of things happening in this world. There's a lot of violence and there's a lot of intimidation. 
but the gospel needs to be preached no matter what. We cannot buy back tomorrow. All we have is today. And so we're going out there in faith, believing that God's going to use us to preach the gospel to those that are lost and encourage the brethren to walk in the things of the Lord. We're going to Kenya. We're going to South Africa. And I need your help. I'm asking you right now, would you help support this mission trip? We have to raise $15,000 for the 40 days while we're over there uh, preaching the gospel. So I want to encourage you to give. Go online to faithpleasesgod.com and give online or stop by Faith Pleases God Church right here in Harlingen and give an offering. It's going to be used to preach the gospel to the nations. Thank you for support and thank you for your prayers. God bless you. You know, I, I just, I really feel I need, I need to go a little longer on this. So if you have plans on leaving early, you're wrong. Because we live in, a, in a, listen, this, we, it's real easy. If I wanted money, I would just sell everything imaginable. You know, I'd be doing, I'd be up here. I know I've heard of churches that, you know, the guys that love God, they're anointed and all that. And the people, they, you know, there's some, some nations and some places where the, where the pastors are almost like worshiped like God. And at the end of the service, they, they auction off his tie and his shoes. They literally do that because the, the people see it in that way. I'm not here. I could care less if you know who I am. I'm here to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Kevin might disappoint you, but Jesus will never disappoint you. Amen. 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 You can live without Kevin, but you can't live without God. Amen. Amen. But I'm telling tell you this because I want you to, your heart to be right before God. So many people get broken and, and wounded you know, because of finances and it's, people didn't do what they're supposed to do or whatever. Bless them. Forget about it. Forgive. Move on. God will bless you. Amen. Amen. But the Hebrew people, when they were delivered out of slavery, that's salvation. I want you to think about it in terms today. When you gave your life to Jesus, that chain of slavery broke off of your life. The Hebrew people, when God raised up Moses and said, go before Pharaoh and tell him, let my people go. And the anointing came and the anointing broke the chains and Pharaoh said, get out of here. And the Bible says that when they walked out, there was nothing missing, nothing broken. That means those that were slaves for all those years, you know, how many know that it's hard work doing what they were doing? Building the pyramids and all that. You know, there are people that didn't have arms because they were crushed, didn't have legs because they were crushed. You know, people who have maybe were blind. We're talking about about three million people. How many know that there are going to be some sick and there are going to be some maimed people and three million people? And all they knew was doing the worst of, of, of work. You know, so there are people who are missing foots, missing legs, missing arms, people who couldn't see, people who couldn't hear. But the word of God says that when they came out, there was nothing missing and nothing broken. That means if they didn't have an arm, an arm began to grow back. If they didn't have a leg, a leg began to grow back so that when they walked out of Egypt, they were completely healed. Amen. Ain't that awesome? Amen. And the Bible says that even the Egyptian people, they gave them all their wealth just to leave. Amen. <laughs> so the people, they walked out of Egypt free because the anointing of God, whole because the power of God. And blessed because of the favor of God. Amen. Just claim that for yourself right now in Jesus' name. I'm healed, I'm free, and I'm blessed. That is a representation of the salvation that we receive in Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, when they went, they went following the Lord. And they were in a desert. Now, how many know there's no water in a desert? And now, when you're taking care of Three and a half million people plus animals. How I many you know you're going to need some water? But every day, they would wake up and God would provide a cloud to cover them and protect them from the hot sun. Now, if you think the Rio Grande Valley is hot, just imagine those deserts. But they had air condition in the desert, amen? Because the glory of the Lord was with them. And then at nighttime, the Bible says there was a pillar of fire 
that would bring warmth and protection for the whole three and a half million people. You get hungry, don't you? They would wake up and there was fresh bread on the floor. Manna. Amen. You think our bakers are good. Just imagine the bakers of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I know some of you, oh, oh, but pastor, I need the butter and all that good stuff. Trust me, this, this, this manna didn't need no butter. Amen. It was heavenly food. And they couldn't even put it in a bag to carry with them, you know, just save some for tomorrow. Because the Bible says that if they try to save some from one day to the next, it was spoiled and rotten. Every day, they had to trust God for protection, for direction, for air condition. All the shins they had to expect. <laughs> they, had to, they had to believe God for, for food, provision. But what about water? Oh, there was a rock. And the rock would flow water for all the people to drink every day as much as they wanted and then some. Ain't that awesome, amen? How I many thank God that Jesus is our rock? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't that cool? But every day, you know what these people would do? They got up. Why did they get up? Because the cloud, the air condition started leaving. And they were just like us. Haven't you noticed us? We only go to where the air condition's at. So they started following the air conditioning. I ain't, I ain't staying out there. It's hot out there. I'm under, this, I'm under this cool breeze right here. This air conditioning, this heavenly air conditioning. It started going, you know, whether you want to sleep in or not, you're going. Amen. I can see my brother waking up, oh, rolling over, grabbing some, some, get some fresh bread. They needed meat. The, 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 the Lord would, would drop down the, 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 the birds and, the, and they would just be able to just grab them and, Cook it up, amen? Praise the Lord. Sounds pretty good, brother, huh? Amen. But then there's a rock that provided the water, and every time they got up, and every time they went, something else got up and went with them, that rock. Supernaturally, that rock would get up and follow them wherever they went. That's some rock. And provided water for them every day. Amen. Amen. That's the provision of the Lord. Now, you can live on your gifts and talents and abilities, and I thank God that you have them. But don't put your faith in them. Because all you need is one person to get offended by something or get jealous by something, and he ends up firing you, cutting you off, and, saying, and, and taking advantage of you. But when you live for God, no man can curse you. When you live for the Lord, nobody can, can steal from you. When you live for God, even when you think, even when they think they got you, they don't have you. Because the Lord will bless you and raise you up to the top. The Bible says he will make you the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. But you see the word of God said, so that you could be generous in every season. The blessings of God, the blessing of Abraham, listen to this promise and receive it right now. God said, I'm going to bless you and make you a blessing. When you say, God, I am not going to bless you. I'm not going to sow my seed. I'm not going to give to your kingdom. You cut off the blessing of God over your life. But when you receive what the Lord has done for you, and you begin to honor God with your tithes and offering, man, you are on one of the most amazing journeys of your life. I cannot tell you how many times me and my wife stood in places where the world looked at us and says it's almost certain death. There's no way financially you could overcome and get to the next level. There's no way that you could take care of this heavy debt or this heavy need. But God knows our needs even before we ask. And we are not following, we are not following our own selfish desires. We're following the leading of the Lord. Amen. I mean, think about it. Those people... They were in the desert, not because they wanted to be in the desert. They were there because God led them to the desert. <clears throat> and some of you might even feel like, man, I'm in, the, I'm in the middle of the desert. Listen, God knows how to bless you in the middle of the desert. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. 
So I encourage you today, be a cheerful giver. Thank the Lord for what he's done and what he's getting ready to do. Amen. The best is getting ready to happen to your life. It's, it's coming your way. Amen. Praise God. Put your hope and put your faith in God. Walk in faith and not by sight. Who cares what the world tries to do to you? Who cares if someone tries to curse you? No one could curse you when God has blessed you. No one could curse you when God has blessed you. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord will protect you. He will guard over you. And you might think, oh, I'm, I'm at the lowest point. No, no, no. When you're walking with God, God's going to raise you up. It's impossible to keep a, a spirit-filled believer down. Amen. So I encourage you with his words today. Receive from the Lord's hand. Amen. He's good and he's faithful. Amen. Do you believe that today? Can we give God praise? Amen. Let's go and honor the Lord with our giving. Let's honor God with our tithes and offerings. If you need an envelope, there's an envelope in the front of your chair. I thank God that some of you are, are grabbing hold of this word today. Some of you, the, the enemy has come to put discouragement on your life. But thank God for the truth of the word of God. It's setting us free. Amen. And so I speak blessings over your life from the north, south, east, and west. I speak increase over your life in Jesus' name. Don't let anybody hold you in fear. When you serve, wherever you serve in your workplace, you serve unto the Lord. Amen. You do your best and you do as, as much as you can and trust God for the rest. Amen. And if they keep on asking for more and more and more, don't be in fear. You just do your best. You keep on doing your best. Don't let them put wounds in your heart. Don't let them try to intimidate you and say, and threaten you, well, I'm going to fire you. You remember who you are. You are in the hands of the Lord. Amen. I had this one, one person, he told me he was talking to a business owner, and the business owner told him, he says, I don't, I don't hire Christians. And the guy looked at him and said, why don't you hire Christians? And he said, because they, they're not afraid of being fired. I tried to fire one, and they looked at me, and they said, go ahead. I know God has a bigger door open for me. I know God has promotion for me. <laughs> Don't abuse your, your liberty. You serve them as you're serving the Lord. Make sure that they know that you do things with excellence because of who your God is. Amen. Amen. But if they look at what you, you're doing and they try to put unjust stuff upon you, no, you're not here to serve a dollar. You're here to serve the king. Right. And God just gives you this opportunity to work in that place so that you will have seed to sow. Amen. But God has better places for you. If that door shuts, there's a bigger one coming up. Amen. The greatest blessing that I have as a, a man of God is to be able to present you before the Lord. Jesus loves you. He died on the cross for you. He wants to come and live on the inside of you and give you a purpose for your life. If you'll surrender to him and ask him to come inside your heart, he will forgive you and you will receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I believe in you. Come inside my heart. Save me. Change me. I want to live for you. In Jesus' name, I am saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you said that prayer and you believe with your heart, the presence of the Holy Spirit is now upon your life. The Spirit of God has come to live inside of you and he's going to teach you his ways. Let me pray a blessing over your life. Father, I thank you for bringing them into salvation. I thank you for this day, Lord, that you are touching their life. Lord, teach them your ways. Show them how they must live. Father, thank you for this great salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.